Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to the Winning Live broadcast. It is my pleasure to be hosting you once again as usual this morning. This is the 22nd day of October 2022 and I am so, 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 so excited. You know, not because of anything else, but because of the value that we are going to be sharing with you this morning. It's a beautiful Saturday morning and I'm transmitting from the beautiful city of Enugu. I don't know where you are, but this is, um, we're having a cool time in Enugu. And um, I also want to use this opportunity to say, to send um, uh, my heartfelt um, sympathy to uh, those who are in the, in the areas that have been flooded by uh, water um, who are experiencing major issues, you know, around flooding at this time in Nigeria, our hearts are with you and our prayers are with you. We believe that God is coming true for you. And for those who have lost their beloved ones who have been displaced, you know, we, we, we believe that help is coming, all right? Help is coming your way. Don't give up. You know, this, uh, the situation of the country, it's, I don't know what how to put it, but we believe that, you know, uh, things are going to be changing in uh, um, in and time. All right, so we want to welcome you once again to the Winning Live broadcast. It's a show where we we'll share value, we we'll bring to you principles, we 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 you know disclose values, skills, principles, strategies on how to become successful, and we are not one-sided. So we share success in different areas. This October, we're focusing on success in your academics because it is um, very important to note that if you must succeed, you must succeed all around. You must be a success in all ramifications. I believe that um, you cannot be spiritual and not succeed, even academically. If you are a, sp a spiritual person, then success should be um, your your second name or your middle name. All right. It's uh, we started this series two weeks ago, and I started by sharing with you um, one vital principle, very very critical. If you must succeed academically, and I said that you must love yourself, knowing fully well that you are not inferior to anybody. You are not inferior to anybody. We may be born equally, but um, we, we may be, you know, we may be born equally, yes, and then because of impute circumstances and things that have happened around us, we've grown to be unequal, yes, but that does not mean that I am inferior to you, neither are you inferior to me. That was what we discussed two weeks ago. It was a very short video, I think about 16 minutes, and it was a powerful All right, so last week um, I hosted um, a young guy who backed first class in his university days and we shared on, you know, how life principles and stories, you know, how he got, how he made it to um, his first class. And I, I did that. I invited him because I wanted him to share it and sharing it would, you know, empower a lot of people who think it's not possible. So many people who are going, who are yet to enter into the tertiary institution, or maybe who are people who are freshers in the university or a tertiary institution, um, who think, oh, let's just get, let's just get any good grades, let's just get any amount of grades, you know, as long as there is no, it's not, um, you know, failure, as long as I'm not going to stay here for longer than I should, let me just you know, what we call speed will let my people go. That has been the mindset. <laughs> that has been the mindset of a lot of people. They just want to escape. Like, even if the narrowest escape route, that's what they want. They don't they want to pick. The narrowest escape route. <laughs> you know, it nearly caught me, but Kai, I, I jumped and passed. <laughs> you know, uh, last week, uh, Mr. Ruka Otene dealt extensively with it and shared how, you know, he, um, he, he backed first class. And one of the things that was striking 
for me is that he said he had to change his mindset. Mm. And having a lot of people who were around him saying it's not possible, it's not possible, it's not possible, he now had to get into, you know, he, he left the environment. That's when I talk, when I, when I teach about mental transformation, when I teach about you, know, you switching your mind from a, a negative environment to a positive one, that was what he did. He said he left his environment and the people that were in the environment who were professing negatively. And he started reading biographies. He started googling biographies of people who were making first class. He started reading their stories of how they did it. That was powerful. That was powerful. So you have to rewire your mind. All right. He also said he st it all started with a firm decision. A firm decision to do that which everybody's saying is not possible. A firm decision to achieve academic excellence, a firm decision to become that great person that everybody is afraid of. Mm. What did I say? A firm decision to become that great person that every other person is afraid of. A lot of people, why they are telling you it's impossible is because they are afraid of it, not because truly that they have tried it, not because because truly it's actually impossible, but because they are afraid of even trying it, all right? So it, it has to, you have to make that firm decision, all right? Um, we also discussed about the spiritual component of ex examination success. You know, we talked about a lot, and I want to encourage you to watch on my YouTube channel. Just type Solomon Okike on YouTube. You're going to see my YouTube channel you can also scroll down on this page, on this Facebook page, and you're going to see that video. You know, a lot of value was shared last week, and I am so sure that we're not going to share anything less today. All right, being that I have, you know, the chemical world, <laughs> I, 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 I have, I have the, how do we even call it again? The uh, the impenetrable, uh, the bones, ha I I'm trying to get it, the bronze, you know. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot, man. Oh, my God. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing to have you here uh, on my show this morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, brother Lee. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you my so pleasure. much. My pleasure. My pleasure. So um, I'm going to do a little of his bio and then... Um, I'll get him to speak to us for a few mm -hmm. minutes and um, we'll get into the interactive session and it's going to be mind-blowing. So today we are going to be discussing about beyond the classroom. What is that thing you do outside the lectures? If you want to achieve academic excellence, what do you do after the lectures? What do you do before the lectures? What do you do even when lectures are not in sight? What do you do? All right. How do you add that extra to the ordinary. How? How do you add that extra to the ordinary? That's what we're going to be talking about. And quickly, Mr. Lotachuku Eze is a 400 level student of chemical engineering um, at the prominent, uh, one of the prominent universities of technology, Futo. He is the founder of Sismos Tutors, a platform dated a few years ago out of his undying love and passion for academic excellence. You need to see what they are doing at Sismo Tutors. You just need to see it. All right, powerful practices for um, students who want to achieve excellence academically. That's why I brought him. He's going to be sharing about Sismos before the end of you know, this session. All right, Lutatiku is also a student educator who has taught mathematics, you know, and sciences for over five years and has dealt has done explicit videos, um, le video lectures, served on courses such as chemistry, mathematics, um, chemical process um, synthetics, chemical process analysis, and engineering strength material. He is among the MTN Science and Technology Foundation scholars for the year 2020. 2020, he envisages um, pursuing a career, a career in academics as he believes that education is a way beyond corners classroom. Right. It is my pleasure to announce and you know, to introduce you all to Mr. Lotus as a tech the platform. 
So wherever you are, an e clap, give him an e clap, give him an e clap. We are so glad to have you. All right. Thank you so much. That's a very kind introduction. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate whatever you've been doing here. It's just amazing. Um, the winning live broadcast have changed lives and it's something very wonderful that I also consider the education part of the whole process because education remains the key of whatever thing we are doing. That's why the way our nation is currently, but education is still the headway of whatever thing we do. Okay, a very quick one. We're looking at academic excellence and we're looking at beyond the classroom, beyond the classroom. Um, you might, you might wonder the topic beyond the classroom, what is actually beyond, all right? I will start with a question. I don't know, what's your definition, definition of academic excellence? What is your definition of academic excellence? Um, I believe a lot of persons believe it's all about A's, having A's and B's, you know? When you have plenty A's and B's, that is academic excellence. But I want to introduce something that is just beyond the A's and B's. However, you know, since some persons take that as the yardstick of academic excellence, but I will tell you, some persons have their way around it. People have their way around the A's and B's. There are some other things people do to get the A's and B's. So for me, academic excellence is not basically the A's and B's. So like I said, in 2020, um, I had an experience, will I say an encounter? Um, let me not go that deep. But through that encounter, I came to realize that academic excellence boils down to three key things. Because if you don't know the purpose of a particular thing, like the other that says, if the purpose of a particular thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So what is the purpose of education? When I know the purpose of education, that will tell me um, what academic excellence is all about. That comes to beyond the classroom. Now, education is there to give you three key things, three key things, which is knowledge, number one, knowledge. The second one is value. The third one is network. These three key things is a very vital reason why education came in place. So if you are excellent academically, which means you are good to go with these three key things. In knowledge, you are there. Values, I will talk about that. And then network. Very fast, let me talk about knowledge. Now, for the knowledge aspect of it, how much do you know concerning a particular course? How much do you know? How much information do you have? Now, like I said, inside the classroom, you are being taught a lot of things. But it, it's very unfortunate that we, we go for classes or we prepare for things having exam in mind. That's the reason why most students come to class. That is why most of them do what they do because they want to pass exam, all right? Academic excellence is far beyond you passing exams. Like I said, people have their way around getting A's and B's. So I will not judge based on the A's and B's you have. No, that is not how I judge. It's based on how much information you have. Your relevance is so much dependent on the amount of information or knowledge you have in a specific field or in your course of study. Now, can you compete with students going to MIT for engineering students? Can you uh, compete with those in IIT? I'm talking about schools beyond Nigeria. Can you compete with them? Are you studying uh, public administration? Are you doing medicine? Can you compete with these guys? Because here, yeah, you are just dependent on passing the exams. How much information do you have? That is the knowledge. So that means you have to go beyond what is being taught in the classroom to amass information relevant to your field. Because the question they give you is the section the lecturer understands in your particular course. They will give you the exam, you get A's and B's, and then you feel you are brutal. <laughs> Sorry to say that. You feel you are too good, all right? But when you go outside there, you see what they are doing. And that is why there's no innovation, there's no nothing, nothing. Mechanical engineers, plenty of them, but we can't even boost up producing one car here in Nigeria. Because of what? We are just exam conscious. Even the lecturers will tell you, read this part, read this part, no knowledge, read that and pass. So that is the knowledge aspect. So let me share this story with us. In my 300 level, um, that was when I got this insight. I had this very encounter of paying attention to knowledge. I started following Indians on YouTube as a chemical engineer, started watching their videos. I can sit down and watch three hours video for a particular course. I am doing that not because I want to pass the exam, which eventually you will do well. The fact remains, in the pursuit of knowledge, excellence is attained. In the pursuit of knowledge, excellence is attained without stress, without stress. So now, with that knowledge, I started watching videos far beyond what they teach in class. We have a textbook that we use. 
these lecturers will just give you what you need to pass exams. But I sat down and watched videos online, follow Indians, three to two hours videos. And what happened, I went to my um, a place of internship there at the Nigeria Gas Marketing Company, a subsidiary of NNPC by God's Great in Worry. So um, the operator there, the man will say, uh, this guy is a first class student, he's a first class student. He has not seen my results, but because of the, the knowledge, you know, the videos I watched, they started paying off. Then they talked about heat exchanger. I watched videos on heat exchanger, aside what the calculation they gave us. So when I was explaining, the man was so surprised. Since that day, I left that very place. The man said, this one is a first class material. He has not seen my results based on what knowledge. Let me leave that one. I think, how many minutes do I still have for this talk? So <laughs> no, go on, I'll, I'll notify you when, when it's time to run. All right. So aside what was taught in class, that was the knowledge I added to it far beyond the classroom, because that is what education does. And that will help our students if they are not exam conscious. If you're not exam conscious, it will so help us. And you see that it is not stress. Yes, they might give you assignments and all that. If you look beyond the grade to the information you will amass, it is, it is mind blowing. And that is what education is all about. It's not about the exam. But I don't blame us because we grew up from a background here in Nigeria where right from primary school days, what you know is exam, exam. But please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, if you are hearing me this morning, forget about examination. Pay attention to that very course. How much do you know as a student? How much videos have you watched on a particular course? People will say, uh, Oga, you are reading past the syllable. No, I want to know more. And eventually, I will still do well in the exam. Now, the second aspect of it. Let's talk about value. Let's talk about value. So now... For you to say you are uh, excellent academically, the knowledge should be there. Then about the value. If you follow through, if you follow through and not cut corners, one thing about having these A's and B's is that students tend to cut corners. You see them cutting corners. You don't do your assignment by yourself. You don't do researches by yourself. In some, some assignments, you can't sit down to do them. Exam time, you depend on people. You copy. What that happens is that the values you ought to amass, I'll mention five of them. The, am I too fast? No, 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 go on. The values you are to amass, you have the discipline. That comes from the value. That is what one thing education should give you. If after school you are not disciplined, then you are not academically excellent. You are not excellent academically at all. If you can't amass discipline in the place of education, that is one thing. Number two is believe in yourself, having that confidence in yourself. That is why education came to be. You have that confidence, you have that trust. Number three is integrity. If you're not honest after going to school, then it's a total waste of time. And then the last one, which is, um, um, what do you call it? After integrity, I should have um, teamwork. Yeah, teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. So as a student, that very teamwork should be there. Teamwork should be there. So let me talk about this discipline. If you are a student and you can sit down to study for three hours, two hours, I tell you, there is nothing you venture into that you're not giving your best because you have been trained to sit down at a place and achieve a particular goal. Mm. Now, yes, you might study, study, and you're not seeing the results. Don't bother yourself. The basic thing is that the discipline is there. You know you can sit down and pursue a particular thing for a certain time. Currently, uh, before during the ASU strike, I can sit down and edit videos, watch videos for over 12 hours. This is something I built while in school. You can sit down, do your assignment to yourself, it started paying off. It started paying off. It's not about the A's and B's, but it has built discipline. I can withstand pressure, handle pressure and all that. All right? So this is one thing it does for you. If you follow through, that is beyond the classroom, beyond the paperwork. This is some of those things you will gain. Discipline. Sit down, pursue a particular thing. Believe in yourself. The second one, trust in yourself. Like, when, for instance, do you know the joy it gives that you read for a particular exam and then you see the result you did amaz you, the, the result was amazing. There is this trust and confidence you have in yourself. That when you are told to do any other thing that is not academics and academic work, you can do that comfortably well because you know you believe in yourself. That is one thing it does. For students that cut corners, as a practice, one thing it does is that you don't believe in yourself. You don't. There's a student I know, he will read a particular thing and he will enter the one and see that very question. But the guy will first of all ask someone to verify if it is true before you write it. Someone, something you read, you read it though. <laughs> so, so very funny. 
you, the guy will have to confirm something you read on your own. So that is one thing beyond the classroom. Education is there to cause you trust yourself, have that confidence in yourself beyond the classroom, beyond the paperwork. Mm. Let me talk about let me talk about teamwork. Teamwork. If you are involved in the class, you learn how to handle people. You learn those things in school. That is why sir, you see some persons after graduation, you, you see that they are not employable, even with a good result, because of what? They are lacking all those things. If you even check, they award you in character and in learning. Character and in learning, that is education. If you follow the process through. Let me rush down to the last one, which is network. Let me rush down to the, um, to the last one. That is network. I believe you can hear me. Hope you got. Hope we are following. All right. Yes. Let yes. Me talk about the basic difference between someone that didn't go to school and me that went to school or that is going to school is the network, the circle, the people I've met. So if after going to school, you don't have the right connections, you you, you didn't go to school at all for for once. You didn't. So for you to say you are, are excellent in your academics. It doesn't make sense having all the A's and B's in this whole world, half first class, but it comes to network, you don't have people. It doesn't make sense. So some persons pay great attention, like ample attention to uh, studies, like they don't have time for people. To me, you are not, you are not excellent at all. Yes, you have A's and B's, but in terms of network, zero, all right? For instance, yeah. I did something recently, I did something for someone recently, but I can't just work on that. I needed something. So I had to call my friend who helped her to do that. And I, I added it to my work. I needed to do something, but I couldn't. It's a video I need to work on, but I needed it to be in a particular format. The guy had to use Photoshop and do it for me. And I used it. It was my very close friend in school. So had it been, I didn't go to, how would I be that kind of person that will help me and give me that very test I need, a particular test. If I meet those roadside guys, they will just do one nonsense for me that I cannot use. All right. So the network should be there. Connect with people. Every student in your school is connection. What did I say? Every student you see in your school is your connection. Please ensure that as you go back to school this time around, don't just pay attention to the paperwork, the textbook. Education is there to help you meet people, vital people that will help you in your journey in life. So that's why if you're in school, pay attention to the gift of those around you. Take out for those things that they are very good at. When you are with your classmates, anyone you see around, take out for something they are very unique in. They will help you later. For instance, let's say I want to go into fashion and designing later on. I'm not thinking about that. I'm giving an example. Now, those that will come and so close with me are my friends, which are those I met in school. And I know they have somewhere going. I have potential clients, very big one at that. Let's say I, I'm a builder. If I want to build tomorrow, let's say I, I'm a builder. My friends in school, they want to build. If they are rich, they will come to me. I'm building for them. So if you don't have this network, it doesn't really make sense that you go, you went to school. It's of no use. So for you to be so that you are you are sound academically, network wise, you must be there. Don't allow your book to. Uh, you don't have time for people. Have time for people is very very important. Like I said, these mm. are people that will help you after life in the four corners of the classroom. Beyond the classroom is the network you have. Who are those guys you can run to when you are, you need some things like informations, people that can send you things that will help you. For instance, the exam I wrote recently, I would have missed that exam if not for a friend. Imagine if I don't have any. If I didn't go to school to meet such people, how would I go about it? So now, um, these are the three key things I'll have to talk about at this point in time. Please, for you to excel, if you have the whole A's and B's in this whole world and um, you are not doing well in terms of your network and value, it, it doesn't really make sense to me. So that's all I have to um, say for this time being. I think I've used uh, almost most of our time. So, but that's it. That's it. That's it. Basically, this three things. So that's how you can say that you are sound um, academically and you are good. When you have the right network, you have the, the right information you ought to have, and then value. You have mass discipline, integrity, and all that. In the end, you still do well. You still pass your exams. If you are good in all these things, you will still pass your exam because, yes, if you have the whole information, I couldn't pass the exam here in Nigeria. It makes no sense. All right. So, yeah. but with these three key things, I believe these are things that will help a student excel academically. These are the three key things I know because that's the purpose of education. Like I said, this is something I realized 
in 2020 and it has helped my mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer the top of passing exams and all that. So these are the three key things I will say for now. Thank you, sir. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Alota. It's It's been a mind-blowing time with you. Like, 25 minutes seems like 25 hours. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Okay, so let's see if we start from the last thing that you talked about. You know, um, I've come to understand that network is very important. You yes. know, um, um, a pastor friend of mine was preaching some time ago. He said, you went to school, you came out to school, and you still went poor. Like, you still became a, a failure. Like, what did you go to school to do? Aren't there people there? Are there not people that you should have connected with in school? Exactly. exactly. All right. You know, because a lot of people think, ah, let's go there. Our focus is to make all the A's, you know, to succeed, you know, succeed academically, to get, you know, the good grades, first class, which is beautiful, you know, but they add, 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 in doing that, they also neglect the place of, of people. I wrote um, in, in my book, Fire Run, one of the chapters, which is um, the, the last chapter, I, I wrote a whole, a whole chapter on the title, people. People are important, whatever you are. If you want to achieve excellence, excellence in any way, any place you are, people are very critical. People are important. Whether it's friendship, relationship, mentorship, leadership, fellowship, whichever ship that you know is driving you with people, you must have to maintain relationships. You must have to build network. You must. People are very important. All right. So you must have time for people. Certainly. That's what you need to have time. That's what you need to have time. Yeah, you, yes. you need to have time to get disciplined. You because must also ensure that you have, you have time, time for people. Because that's why you are there. That's why you, that is the only reason why you are there. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 And and one of the ways I've come to find out, I've come to learn that you can build quality relationships is, you know, just like you said, finding out what people do. You know, you can find out what they do. Try to, you know patronize them. Sometimes I buy things that I don't need. It's not necessarily not necessarily because I want to show off, but because I want to, you know, encourage maybe a classmate, encourage somebody. You know, yes. I just, you know, buy it, keep it. Now I know that sometimes the need will come. All right. Um my mentor will always call it, you know, a, 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 a what is it, what is it thing? A depositing in people's emotional bank accounts. Mm. Depositing in Who's emotional bank account? It's not just about knowing everybody in the school. Yes, you know, not about. But what what is it that they can point out to that how, how you helped them? Did hmm. you help them with your note? Did you help them with your textbook? Did you help them with you know teaching them what they didn't know? Did you help them with money? Did you help? Did you call them when they were not when you didn't see them in class? What did you do? That they will remember you for in years to come. That is exactly. how to have quality relationship, how to network effectively. People mm. may know your name, but if they don't know you for something and they cannot remember something where you, where you have been of benefit to them, when the opportunity for them to you know patronize you or to you know help you become a better person in the future comes, they won't remember you. I won't remember you. You won't sure. be in the the people, that will, the people that will be in the in the equation are the people that have helped them in one way or the other. Exactly. It becomes so important that if as a student you don't even have money, but there is something you have. Maybe you are the one that is you are the one that is taking the you are the best in, in the class, and people would want to rally around you. Don't don't push them away, you know. Don't push them away and say, ah, um, let everybody be on their own. So people use that excuse of I don't study in groups, I don't know how to study, which is which is sometimes will be true, but why don't you find a way to help them learn a few things that you know? And mm -hmm. by so doing your building effective network. So your building effective network, I 
I remember so well that the, 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 the friendships that I built in secondary school are so solid. And sometimes even more solid than that of the university. Really? The friendships, the people, the, my yeah. friends, they are still there. That is because hmm. we were helpful to others. We were helpful to each other. So connect, connect with people, connect with people. You have time for people. All right. So how about, you know, how do you do, how do you um, work on ensuring that while trying to network, you don't get into the wrong hands? You know, because it's, it's <laughs> so something we should look at. I yes. believe that we we become, that, that we assimilate by association. That is exactly. to say that we become the persons that we've connected with. Over time. That, 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 that's our network. We become a very critical part yeah, um, yeah. of that our network. So, Mr. Lothar, how do we um, balance it to ensure that while we are networking with people, we don't network with the people that would derail us, the yeah. people that will not make us to leave studying and yeah. start going and start <laughs> party, you know, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, like I said. You have to see something in someone that will attract you. That's the first mm. thing. Something must attract you to someone. So um, yeah. if your value does not align with mine, I wonder what I'm coming to do with you. I wonder the network we're about to uh, create, you know. So basically, mm. you have to look out for someone that is heading the same direction you are going to. Someone with mm. the same value. Something must attract you. For me, once you have something here, my brother, immediately, aside you having something here, when I look at this, <laughs> this person is unique. These are some things this guy is doing. Wow. Something must attract you. And meanwhile, you can also attract people. Uh, aside, you are people attracting you. So now, exactly. when they are coming, you have to be very careful. Some mm. persons come in the name of, for instance, me that I enjoy teaching. You will mm. see both sisters and brothers. So, <laughs> <laughs> in, in a bit to help, you have to be very careful. You know mm. those that are for, for classes, you know those that are used... used your 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 distance will tell you be very discerning in all this. So carefulness is needed. Carefulness is needed in a bit to help, in a bit to connect. The very reason why you are there should also be at the back of your mind. Remember, studies attached beyond the classroom. The classroom matters as well. Even though we are looking at what happens as outside outside classroom, the mm. classroom is also one of the reasons why you are there. So pay attention to people that have the same value as you. However. You still need some of those bad guys, you know. <laughs> don't, 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 don't misunderstand me. <laughs> don't okay, misunderstand okay. me. Please explain. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Look at what I mean. They might not be that close friends. You know where they are. Mm. But you know some persons might be very funny. Because he's not attending your fellowship, he doesn't have the same value as you, all those things. You, when you see them, you don't give them that sense of belonging. You don't greet mm. them. Some persons can be like that. You understand? But you can still be, when I mean friends, not that they are too close. They might not even know your lodge, but there's this kind of, this guy, who, when you see, oh, don't lead, don't lead, the guy who, who have, that's that greeting and all that. It will come to a point where you will still need their help someday. That is one thing I believe, even though they are bad. <laughs> even though exactly. they are bad, you will still need their help. So what do I mean? You don't just, you, you understand what I'm saying. You are not too close to them. You are not so far mm -hmm. from them. You know mm -hmm. the boundary. You know the yeah. limits. You can relate with them. But please and please, don't use because there's nothing in their head or because they are rough and all that and you mm -hmm. push them mm -hmm. all the time. If they, yeah. see you, if they see you in trouble, my brother, they will finish you. But if you are good, <laughs> but if, if you are good, they, it will surprise you how they will help. If not for yeah. this one, uh, something like that. So please, even yeah. in a bit not to um, get influenced, also be careful not to um, put yourself in a situation whereby when someone will help you, they will say, Oga, hold on here, don't leave him, don't leave him. <laughs> Something like that. So that's what I yeah. have to say. Yeah, my, my, my spiritual mother would always say that there are levels to access, you know. Um, exactly. There are levels to access. The person, someone might come to your house to deliver something to you and then you say, give it to the gatekeeper. Mm. You don't need to come and see the person. Yes, uh, there, there, there are persons that will come. They will not, you will not permit them to come into the compound. I don't give them maybe, food. 
maybe I'm still coming to that level now. Okay. Maybe okay. Um, maybe you can allow them to enter the compound, maybe knock on your door or the door of your flat, and then you come to the door and you collect what they brought, and they will go. There are persons mm. that come to your house, you will usher them into the parlor. Yes. You know? <laughs> and that is where it ends. They cannot go farther than, than that. There are also people that will come to your house, you know, and you, they can, they, you don't, they don't need your permission. permission. They can come into your room. They can to your kitchen. People. They can go into your toilet everywhere, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Those yeah. people are levels of access. <laughs> and the person that you, you told to drop the stuff at the gate, you know, you're not fighting with him. You're not in war with him, but the access level does not determine, does not you know, allow him to come closer. So that happens in, in life and in different spheres. In school, there are people that you can only greet with. You, you may not even know their names. You will just, oh, wow, wow. They, they will call you, you, you know, just be friendly. That's, that's the idea. You just have to be what? friendly friendly Thanks. friendly then there are people that you know their names there are people that you've even created a, a study whatsapp group for just a specific people not everybody you know there are people that you even know their house there are people you know they do. you know those things are access you know but by association you will understand that you become what you will become yes even if you are the most, you know, um, intelligent student, and then you know book very well, and then you start associating with people who are not intelligent, who do not care to be, who are not, you know, interested in becoming, and they become your best friends, that there is a problem there. So association is key. And then while we are still talking about network, we're also looking at beyond the school. After yes. that four years, after that five years, after that six or seven years, that mm -hmm. you have to conclude your schooling activities. Mm -hmm. Are you in right terms with people that they can that they can refer you to opportunities? Yes. Are you in the right terms with people that you know you don't need to cry to them before they will they will be okay. a to you? That yeah. is how to build quality relationships in the school. All right, so um, Mr. Mr. Na Emeka, you know, something he said. Okay, sorry for that break. Um, you said your flexibility should be intertwined with firmness that is ensured when understandable boundaries are created. All right, these are strong points, bro. Okay, I am I am enjoying today's session. Beautiful. All right, so there is there is need for you know creating boundaries. Very important. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lotachuku Eze, let's talk about building discipline. You know, it's one of the. In fact, it was the first va value that you shared that that is what you can you know acquire as beyond the classroom yes so how how do you build discipline for people who cannot sit for one hour and study and then they are hearing that some other people are sitting for five six hours and studying at the street how do they start? Where, where do they start from what okay. is the thing that they need to do at least to start from somewhere you know okay. Okay. Um, basically, like like um, you you said when we started, a summary from what um we did last week. The mindset yeah. first. It starts with the mind. It starts yeah. with the mind. For instance, let me share this. Before now, I can't cram, no matter the line, no matter how short it is. That is something I told myself, young man. Even Bible verses is as terrible as that. I can remember the portion. I will tell you this is Matthew. But I can't remember. I can't um, get the particular verse. All right. Mm. So then I told myself, it's about the mind. So first, you have to remove that limitation. Until I told myself, young man, you can actually cram. The need came. I have to. I have to. I have to learn how to do that. 
So now, the first thing is the mindset. Tell yourself, I can do this. Just like the mind, when you position the mind to do a particular thing, everything in you works towards that direction. I don't know if I've ever done something like this. Say, I will read, for instance, um, I will do this today. And if it doesn't work that way, it is always difficult to reposition one and that thing, to do another thing altogether. I'm talking about the power of the mind when you focus on a particular thing. First is mm -hmm. the mindset. And that thing I will talk about is you starting somewhere. The fact is that, yes, you are finding it difficult to read. Start from somewhere. Like I was talking with a friend the other day, um, just like as you call off the strike, you know. So they are confused of what to do. So I said, you can do 30 minutes. If you read for 30 minutes, you do one hour WhatsApp. You, you reward yourself for one hour. Like, you started laughing. I said, yes, don't start like that. 30 minutes. A time will come where you will know that some the thing pursuing you is more than 30 minutes. Yeah. Some, it's actually more than 30 minutes. So you have to start somewhere. First from the mindset. Number two, understand what you are into. Understand what you are into. You can't have an, okay, I'm not in a good. When you have the right mindset. Number two, ensure you don't have any other alternative. Most times, the reason why people struggle to read is because you have an alternative. You have something mm. to do. Mm. And you have an alternative. Someone like me that I know I will not copy in the hall. Young man, how will I enter the hall without reading where I know there's no source? So that's one thing. If you have alternative, my dear, you keep struggling to read. If mm. there's an alternative, you cannot read. But if there's no alternative, my dear, even if it's to get read and get see, I'm not advising that, but if it's to read as much as you can, it's my friend I know, out of five questions, he said, if he can, the guy can answer three, I'm okay. At least, answer three <laughs> out of five, you try. It's better than people having alternative. So when you don't have an alternative, you will study. So the next thing I will say, all of them boils down to the mindset. So start as little as you can. Like I said, you can actually go to a friend. Most times, if you, if you struggle, if you're struggling to read, and you are bringing something you don't understand, open a book. Number one, you don't get strength. Number two, you don't understand it. The next thing is to sleep off. So first, yeah. our advice, take out for people that have understood that thing before. Let them, even before opening the book, let them explain. So like me, what I do, before I open any textbook, book, I'll first of all go online, watch videos. Let me see the concept behind what I'm doing. If I'm not coming back to the book, I'm understanding. Once you understand what you are reading, you can stay for a long time. But if you're not understanding, there is no way that you can keep on doing that. Another thing, the place of God. The place of God. I must say this. There is a course. Um, engineer, that's with engineering mechanics. My dear, I was so confused. People will laugh, but I did it. I brought that book, kept it on the floor, stepped on it. I said, I have the mind of Christ. This book was written mm. by somebody. I understand it. It is mm. mad. It's mad. It can mm. be mad. How can someone place a book and stand on it and start praying? It can be mad. But <laughs> when when the head don't fool, you don't have any other choice, but you have to do that. So prayer is another thing that you can do. So I've said two, two things. Mindset, don't have an alternative. Let the only alternative you have is to study. You don't have choice but to study, no matter how difficult. Start very little, very little. 30 minutes, one hour, but just be consistent. 30 minutes, one hour. Go to materials that will simplify it for you. Read those materials first before you come back to the complex one, and then you can understand. If you are someone that understands, just understand yourself. Know what works for you. Anyone that works for you, you go with that. So that's how you can actually study with time, you will jump problems that will keep you for seven hours. For those into engineering, you go solve one problem, your head will come out. <laughs> so, this is just the basic thing. But what I will emphasize on is don't have alternative. That is why most students are struggling to read because you have an alternative. And so mm. you don't have any alternative but to study and pass and write on your own. So that's it, sir. All right, that, that's, that's beautiful. Um, I also have come to find out that most of the time the challenge is um, that most students are distracted, you know. Um, to build discipline um, requires that all the distractions, you know, um, are dealt with. So yeah. uh, the distraction could be um, maybe too much extracurricular activities. The distraction yeah. could be too media. It could be, it could be some things that look good though. It may be maybe some things that are good though, but they are not appropriate for the time. So how do you yeah. deal with distractions okay how can do some distractions yeah good now um distraction can come in different forms like you said in different forms now um it will be fine if you first of all define your goals for that semester for that period what do you want to achieve what do you want to achieve 
For instance, when you, you have a particular goal you are working towards, and you start misbehaving, you, you will know. You will know. Um, let me speak Igbo. Oh, quack, and I'm going to get to the Is that the leg you take and get to the place you are going to? Is it by doing this? So when you look at you have to check the goal you set down for yourself. Or please, for every semester, have a goal for yourself. So when you do, even while in church, while you do some things you do with friends, with your phone, there's something I do personally. Well, once I get to photo, people know. I will not have the same time I do have with you when we are on break, when we are on strike. This is something I want to do for just five years. After five years, we'll have the whole time in the whole world. Understand this. I can only be an undergraduate once. And after that, no more. So why will I start sharing my, you know, on things that I know I will enjoy later? Do you mm. know how I pay myself? After the semester, I will have time for those things. That's how I roll myself. That's how mm. I roll myself. So those things that distract you. Have this in mind. My brother, now only once. You cannot be an under, undergraduate two times. Don't ensure mm. you don't regret it. Okay? Once you have that in mind, it, it will help you. If it is your phone, my brother, after the section, you have your phone to yourself. You can time yourself. Put an alarm. After one hour alarm will ring, you keep the phone. Do what you ought to do. But I tell mm. you, when you get so much engulfed with your work, eh, you will forget you have phone. Like go online and watch. You won't have that time, you know. If it is for friends, for some of our brothers that can handle the academics with relationship, power. If you... <laughs> <laughs> no, not just relationship. Not just relationship. Some people we have to live with marriage. <laughs> if, if if you can do that, um, that's your own. Just understand some things. Uh, for me, someone like me, I cannot handle those two things. I cannot be doing 21 units. I will go and carry six units load and put on top 21 because woman, woman has six units on its own. So, <laughs> so you have to pay attention to those things. You still have time for all those things. That's just the basic thing. Just pay attention. Yeah. Four years, five years, six years, you are done. So those things distracting you. It could be, for instance, let me talk about this. Distraction might not be just, it can be something good distracting you. For instance, mm. some of us are that, Services in church. Mm. Services in uh, sorry to say this. I've I've come to realize most of the papa, papa, you see them having carryovers. Like it doesn't make sense. Right. It doesn't mm. make sense. Please strike a balance. There is there is a president I know, president of Castle. He graduated with first class. Do you know what mm. that guy does? The guy knows that once he enters school, there's no chance for academics that much because of fellowship. During mm. holidays, he study ahead during holiday. That's his wisdom. Mm. Because you know that during school, you have to be the last person to go. There's no two ways about it. Mm. Now you go first come. Now you go first, you're the last person to go. So what he does is to diverse a strategy that will help him study ahead of time, then go to school and start fellowship. God cannot help you if you're not helping yourself. Please, yeah. in as much as you step in the fellowship, but please don't run away from God's work. You have to do that. That's what you are called. So when you are hey. doing that, apply wisdom. The Lord will help you. Let me let me add this thing before I, before I leave. For those having a fellowship, there's something I realized. If you are genuine with what you are doing and you have a goal at heart, do you know that after services like this, I'll be very tired. But when you make a little prayer, Father, energize me tonight. I went for your work. The kind of energy you will have, the basis is that some of us are just lazy because you went for a fellowship and you are tired, you want to sleep up. But if you know what you ought to do, Father, energize me. I went to your work. I need The kind of energy you get that night, my brother. So you are just lazy. That is why you go for fellowship. You are tired. You sleep parallel to the next day. You are just lazy. If you pray to God, he will give you energy. So don't use uh, fellowship as an excuse or distraction. Thank you. Thank you so much. That, that was a beautiful one. Brothers and sisters, don't be lazy, you know. <laughs> even, when you, even when you do God's work, remember to also do this. Because um, it's in getting the best results, you know, genuinely that God is also giving glory. You know, um, you don't want to be that object of mockery to God, you know, uh, that hey, he was in fellowship every time he was fellowship, every time, every time, yet he failed. No, 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 no. That's not, that, that's not something good to talk about you as a Christian. So uh, why you put your time, why you give your best to your um you to God, also give your best to academics. I can't say you should give 50% and 50%, but I say you give 100% here, 100% here. You have the ability to do it. You have the ability to do it. 
strength and capacity to do that. All right. We're, we're going to be, you know, <clears throat> winding up at, at this time. But before then, <clears throat> um, we're going to just one more question. I don't know if you have a question, please drop in the comment section. I can see a comment by Ambassador Grace Akboki. I can see a comment by Mr. Fidelis Uche. I can see that of um, um, Mr. Uh, Nemeka Goswil. And a lot of you who have joined and have not seen your comment, you can also drop your comment. What was the high point for you at this session? What, what, what did you learn? What was it that you know, benefited you much? I know it was a powerful session, but just point out, write it on the comment section. You have a question, please drop it there. All right. So finally, um, you said you, you said something about not being exam conscious. All right. Um, could you please elaborate more on it? Um, oh, okay. Um, about the exams, like I said, um, let it be that while you are studying, like I said, is for knowledge. Now, the exam consciousness I'm talking about is that most people, Mama, let me use this. Guy, I beg, when they come out for exam, I won't read. When they come out for exam, I won't read. Yes, now they they come out for exam. You feel that can, you feel reader. Mm. But mm. after the exam, what is inside his head after the exam? You are mm. a chemical engineer, but you don't have, you don't know anything about that field. Exam is good, you pass it. But there's something I've realized. If you go for knowledge, you still pass that exam. Mm. You still pass that exam. You see students in class now. For instance, a lecturer teaching. The question they are asking is that if this if this comes in, what will we, what are we going to do? If this comes out in the exam, what are we going to do? So why you are in class because of the exam? It's annoying, you know. It doesn't make mm. sense. So why you are in class? Sit down. Let the reason why you are asking that question be to understand more. Not for exam. There's a prof I know, one prof like that. If you ask that kind of question, you will not answer it. If you are asking because of exam, you will not answer the question. That is people mm. that understand the power of knowledge. For you to grow, when I go, you focus in that very just read, sit down, and if you are like that, you open up your mind. But if, if you are so exam conscious, you will be tensed up, you will get tired easily. Everything will stress mm -hmm. you. But you. Pay attention to that knowledge I'm talking about. That, like I said, I enjoyed it during my IT. Like you need to see the way this man was calling me, you know that kind of thing. Now, any question yeah. you ask me, <laughs> to the point that you ask even the ones I don't know, because of what the impression I created the first day I entered there, it mm -hmm. wasn't my. School. They didn't teach in class, but this is something I sat down to watch videos from Indian guys. I'm in love with them. Eh? What if I say I want to marry an Indian woman? <laughs> but that's a sign. Because these guys, these guys are good. These guys are good. So please, mm. if you want, as you want to pass exam, but let the reason why you are coming to that class to learn not be because of exam. Let the reason why you do what you do not be because of exam. In the end, like I said, in pursuit of knowledge, excellence is attained. There's no two ways about it. What if the man decides to ask a question? Okay, some lecturers do, do, do that. They will ask you a question that might not be in what they thought. Sometimes it happens. So what will you do? It is someone that has actually gone beyond, but please don't go so off from what you have been told. Don't go too off. You now get confused. <laughs> you now get confused. I'm not talking about, and that's, okay, let me say this. As you're getting the knowledge, let me add this. This is something yeah. that started, is helping me recently from my 300 level. As you are reading ahead, as you are expanding, getting knowledge, go for classes. Mm. Go for classes. When I sit down in class, God helping, I will know the question that I will ask. Because when you sit down, when you read more, you will know more than even the lecturer teaching. So you know where the question is coming from because you even have more knowledge than the person. So please, in as much as you want to pass exam, Pay key attention to understanding what you are doing. It doesn't make sense cramming what you jack, you jack it and pour it. Um, some of my friends will testify, some of them they are if they are being, if you see my face in class sometimes, if you see my face in class sometimes, any fly that comes across will die. You know why? When I sit down in class and I see people, lecturers, those teaching like if it's not making sense, I'm not happy with you. Because what you are giving me is just for me to pass exam. You see my mm. face in that kind of class, I won't be happy because. I'm, I'm, I'm the person losing. How do I stand the, the competition in the outside world? Yes, I will pass your exam, but I'm losing. So in as much mm. as you want to pass exam, please and um, please, um, you are not competing with just your classmates. That is yeah. if there's need for that. If there's need for that. But you are just talking about the outside world, how you can actually um, do well there. So that's what I can say about you passing your exam. Please go for classes. 
don't be that kind of person that you want to gain knowledge. You will stay at home reading off points. Biko, <laughs> go for classes and as much as you need knowledge. So in the end, with knowledge, you can still pass that exam without fear. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. That that was a powerful session. That was really, really a powerful session. All right. So um, could you please tell us more about Sysmo Tutors and what you do? Oh. All right. And um, I hope I can share your contacts with, um, with our audience, um, your phone number, oh. your WhatsApp line, if um, anyone wants to reach out to you. Okay. Um, basically, like I said, I like teaching. So, and I want to see the educational system work again. That is my own. Beyond, just like I said, I keep stressing on knowledge. Knowledge. So, um, what we do in Sismo, we are basically um, tutors. You know, private teachers precisely that offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, coaching to students, be it math, science courses for now, basically science courses. But you know, over time, we will we'll expand. And you can actually hire teachers that will even teach you art courses. But for now, we focus on science students, one-on-one -on -one classes. If you're writing BE exam, OSTME, whatever exam you're writing, down to primary school, I had to start that recently because I noticed uh, the foundation of students is not, if not that strong, it, it's something else. So initially, I don't teach them because of the noise. And, you know, yeah. but currently we do that. So from grade one, grade five down to um, secondary school, to the university, just one-on-one -on -one coaching with the students, either at your own house, the comfort of your home, or anywhere that is convenient for you, we'll sit one-on-one -on -one and we'll teach you sciences and maths. So that's what we'll do basically at this month with us. Thank you so much. Um, let's have your parting word now. You said? I didn't hear you. Your parting words. Your parting okay. words. What I will say is that academic excellence is way beyond the classroom. If you cannot create the right network after school, you didn't gain the values you should gain, and the knowledge is not there. My dear, you need to go back to school. So in the end, please, while in school, pursue these three things, and you will, you will, you will never regret going to school. And you'll not be part of them that say that school is scam. School is not scam if you have these three things. So the last word I will leave with you, have it in mind that school is not scam if you attain these three key things. You will enjoy life, I'm telling you. You will enjoy life. Thank you so much, uh, Solo. Thank you for having me. I sincerely appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Lotachuku, it's been a pleasure having you here, and I am so excited. The value that has been shared, the strategy that has been shared, are so you know amazing, and they are they are foolproof strategies that anyone can use to succeed academically. You talk about uh, you know getting the knowledge, acquiring the values, and of course making the right network that will help you sustain you even after the tertiary institution. I want to say thank you to everyone who has joined us to, to, to this morning. On this show. It's been an amazing one. And of course, um, we will be back next week to discuss the strategies for um, achieving academic excellence. In case you want to reach out to me, Mr. Lutachuku, as his phone number is right there on the screen, just you know, send him a WhatsApp message, and please do not bug him with messages. Just be responsible. Thank you, sir. Be responsible. So thank you so much, everyone. God bless you for being right, here. And in you. the meantime, we will see you next week, um, Saturday. For now, bye. Yeah.